Why, Apple? Why couldn't you just give me the one thing I really wanted? Let's ramble. Hold up. Things go well when I pull up. They all on me like it wants. Hey, what's up guys? So I just finished watching the Apple event, probably as you did. And so you already know this turned out to be an iPad exclusive event. And I have some thoughts on today's announcements. And yes, I did pull out my credit card. And yes, I will tell you what I ended up getting and why. But first, let's address the giant elephant in the room, or rather the mini elephant in the room, because Apple did not present a new iPad mini today. And that makes me a very, very sad reviewer. I know there weren't any rumors whatsoever about an upgraded iPad mini, but since the announcement of the iPad mini 6 came out of nowhere as well back in 2021, I always keep a little bit of hope. I mean, an iPad mini Pro with a faster chip and a snappier display, is that really so much to ask? Well, apparently it is. I always thought the iPad mini 6 was really popular. I mean, you guys in the comment section seem to love it just as much as I do, but maybe we're just a vocal minority. I don't know, it just wasn't meant to be. Anyway, enough mourning, life goes on. Let's have a look at what Apple did present today. So right off the bat, Tim Cook opened the event by saying, this is the biggest day for iPad since its introduction. Production. That's a bold statement, Tim. I mean, after quite a few years of incremental upgrades, we're kind of expecting something big here. And there are definitely some cool upgrades, but do they live up to the statement? Let me know in the comments what you think. Anyway, as expected, there will be a new iPad Air, and as expected, it is a less beefy version of the iPad Pro. But this time, that means we get to see some significant upgrades. Most notably, the iPad Air will come in two sizes for the very first time, the usual 11-inch and also a new 13-inch version for those of us who like to have a little more screen to work with. What is interesting is that the Air now comes in four colors as opposed to five colors on the Gen 5, space gray, starlight, purple, and blue. So it looks like Apple decided to ditch the pink option. Both sizes will have the same features, both will keep the liquid retina display, but the new iPad Air models got the M2 chip, which together with the improved GPU should help with some new AI features, and of course with the performance on more demanding games like Assassin's Creed. And that gaming experience should be further enhanced by the landscape stereo speakers, and if you opt for the 13-inch model, you'll get to enjoy the double bass as well. The new Air will also support the hover feature on the Apple Pencil, which might seem trivial, but this feature will actually make the iPad Air a lot more attractive to artists. Now, one feature I was personally really hoping to see did actually materialize today, and that is the position of the front-facing camera. For years, we've been asking for this to happen, and now finally the camera has moved from the side to the top in landscape orientation, finally fixing that awkward side angle we all hate so much. I always assumed the reason Apple didn't change the camera position is because that's where the Apple Pencil pairs and charges. And if that was the case, they seem to have found a solution because the Apple Pencil will still be charging and pairing in that familiar spot. Another bit of good news is that the base storage on both models has doubled to 120 gigabytes, and that is about time because offering 64 gigs in 2024 should be made illegal. But it's not just the base storage, it's also the maximum storage that has increased by quite a bit actually. While the maximum storage on the fifth gen iPad Air was only 256 gigs, the new Air goes all the way up to one terabyte. And with the starting price remaining at $599, I think that this new iPad Air might just end up being the most enticing option for most users. Now that brings us to the main event, I guess you could say, the new iPad Pro. Now here, we all had some really big hopes, both for the iPad Pro and for the Magic Keyboard. And to be fair, some wish list items have been fulfilled, but to call this the biggest day for iPad since its introduction, I don't know. Anyway, let's start with the design. Like the iPad Air, the Pro will come in two sizes, 11 inch and 13 inch, and in two colors, silver and space black. A very noticeable design change though, is the fact that these new iPad Pros are incredibly thin, coming in at 5.3 inch and 5.1 inch on the largest iPad. Now, that is both impressive and scary at the same time. I'm sure most of you will remember Bendgate. So I'm really curious what kind of kryptonite they hid inside these new iPads to avoid a repetition of that fiasco. I guess time will tell. Another big change and a very welcome change at that, I know a lot of us have been asking for this and that is the new OLED displays. While the Liquid Retina XDR display is very nice, you can't beat OLED. So I'm pretty excited to see Apple finally switching to OLED for these iPads. They did show us a new sort of technology whereby they basically stick two OLED panels together, appropriately named Tandem OLED, and retaining the 1000 nits brightness and the 
1500 nits peak brightness in HDR. What's really cool is that the new Ultra Retina XDR display, as Apple calls it, will not be reserved only for the 13 inch model, but will also be seen on the 11 inch model as well. There will also be a nano texture option available for those users that are bothered by screen glare. I do have a nano texture studio display here in the studio, but that is mainly because of all the lights here in the office. I personally don't really feel the need to have that on my iPad Pro, but that's very personal. Now, for the longest time, we all expected to see the M3 chip in these new iPads. But for a few weeks now, rumors had been circulating around the M4 potentially making its debut, and those rumors turned out to be true, and the chip looks pretty impressive. With the second gen 3 nanometer tech, do keep in mind though, when you're thinking about ordering, as usual, there will be a difference between the storage models in terms of performance. Up to 512 gigabyte storage, you will get a nine core CPU, three performance cores, and six efficiency cores. Whereas the one and two terabyte models will get the 10 core CPU, four performance cores, and of course, 16 gigs of RAM, as opposed to eight on the lower storage models. And that means that if you're one of those people that needs those new features like dynamic caching, mesh shading, and ray tracing, you're gonna need that 10 core CPU, and you'll have to fork out the big bucks for one of the higher storage options. And according to Apple, the top end models will be four times faster than their M2 counterparts. But that brings us right back to the same question we have every single time there is another upgrade. Why do we need this much power? I think most of us agree that the bottleneck in these iPads is not the hardware, it's the software. With many of us believing that iPadOS is still not what it could or should be. Apple did mention a strong focus on AI, which it showed off in demonstrations of updated versions of its own two Pro apps, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro, which will now be called Final Cut Pro 2 and Logic Pro 2, respectively. The new features in those apps do look pretty cool. And as a video creator, I look forward to using the multicam option in Final Cut Pro on the iPad, since that is an option I like to use a lot here in the studio. Rendering should be two times faster than on the M1 devices, and we will be able to edit straight off a Thunderbolt drive, which is nice, especially if you choose one of the lower storage models. The camera and LiDAR scanner are improved as well. Apple showed off a new AI feature eliminating shadows and scans, and that might sound like a small thing, but making scans is pretty much the only thing I actually use the iPad's camera for, and it can be seriously annoying to find the right lighting to get a good scan. So this could actually turn out to be a super useful feature. Very, very happy to see the camera move to landscape on the Pro models as well, especially since that is the iPad that is probably gonna be used the most inside the Magic Keyboard. Speaking of the Magic Keyboard, yes, it did get upgraded, as per the rumors but maybe not as much as people had hoped. It will be thinner and lighter, much like the actual iPads. There will be a function row, which I know a lot of us have been asking for, and a larger trackpad, also a very welcome addition. The palm rest will be made out of aluminum, which is not the entire keyboard or the entire bottom, as the rumor suggested, but Apple did confirm that they made this change to bring it more in line with the design of the MacBooks. Like the iPad Air, the Pro will also get a larger base storage, the 11 inch will start at $999 and the 13 inch comes in at $1299. And lastly, we got a brand new Apple Pencil with some substantial updates. There is a new sensor in there, which brings a new squeeze function to activate things while giving haptic feedback. And I'm actually really curious what that feels like in person. It will also come with a gyroscope enabling a new feature called barrel roll, whereby rolling the pencil between the fingers can do things like adjusting brush or stroke. There will not be a storage space for the pencil inside the hinge of the Magic Keyboard as some of the patents suggested, which makes the addition of Find My to the new Apple Pencil even more useful. The Apple Pencil has got to be one of the most losable Apple accessories in existence, so it is about time this feature would be added. So yeah, I have mixed feelings about the event. I can't really say it's just another incremental upgrade. I do think it's a bit more than that, but to call this the biggest day for iPad since the introduction, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I did go ahead and order the 11 inch M4 iPad Pro, the new Magic Keyboard and the Apple Pencil to review for you guys, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, Give it a like. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.